So with that, I'll turn it over to Jenny, uh, who will give her uh, presentation on the kinase inhibitor uh, yeah. mechanisms. So cardiac adverse events is a primary cause of preclinical drug attrition. And this is in part due to inadequate animal models used during the drug development process. Therefore, there is a clear need for a better predictive model of not only cardiotoxicity, but also in general cardiac adverse events, such as arrhythmias. So current animal models that are, have been used, you know, cardiac telemetry models, ex vivo models, such as the Langendorf, um, as well as in vitro models. And a better predictive model would not only allow for a decrease in animal usage, but also a decrease in preclinical attrition rates. Recent advancements in stem cell technologies have allowed for the differentiation of iPS-derived cell lines, including the cardiomyocytes. This novel model not only expresses functional contractile proteins, such as troponin T, alpha-actinin, and alpha-beta-myosin heavy chain, but also functional channels such as sodium, calcium, and although at, at low levels, the HERD channel as well. We also did a considerable amount of expression profiling of these cells, and we found that they were much closer to the fetal, which is in red, than to the adult cardiomyocyte. But if you keep these cells in culture over a long period of time, they tend to increase the expression of the adult cardiomyocyte markers. Therefore, we found that this model also not only has functional contractile pro properties, but also functional electrophysiological properties. This is a trace of the microelectrode array in which the, right here you see the sodium peak to the top of the calcium peak, which is the equivalent of QT. So the purpose of my studies, of what I'm going to be presenting, was to determine the mechanism of sunitinib, which I'm sutin mediated cardiotoxicity in this novel IPS-derived cardiomyocyte model. Sutin is a multi-targeted receptor tyrosine kinase inhibitor, which inhibits both the proliferative survival and angiogenesis pathways, and is currently in the clinic to treat advanced renal cell carcinoma and imatinib-resistant gastrointestinal stromal tumors, but is associated with a considerable amount of cardiac adverse events, such as hypertension, which leads to hypertrophy of the cardiomyocytes, as well as decreases in the left ventricular ejection fraction, as well as congestive heart failure. And also in the clinic, uh, they've been able to detect prolongation of QT. The adverse cardiac events have been associated with the uh, promiscuity of sutin. It binds over 180 kinases, as you can see in the AMBIT profile here to the right of the dendrogram. This is a 10 micromolar AMBIT profile. So I wanted to take a look at a various number of kinases of which have been predicted in the literature, such as AMPK and RIS by Tom Force's group, and then looking at the AMBIT profile, which I'll discuss later, I looked at a number of kinases. The only one I'll discuss will be Aurora. So AMPK is the master metabolic regulator of the cell, and it regulates the anabolic catabolic switch. Cardiomyocytes have a very small pool of ATP, and once it's depleted, uh, the cell is most likely destined to die. So therefore, we thought it was critical to take a look at AMPK. But in the literature, there's been a lot of controversy over whether AMPK is mediating suit and cardiotoxicity. So Tom Force's group, and this is a paper published by Kirkella, overexpressed a truncated form of AMPK in neonatal rat ventricular myocytes and then treated with suit. And you can see that there's a clear attenuation of student-mediated uh, cell death, as measured by the tunnel assay. On the other hand, uh, Brian Hasanoff's group, they pre-treated with metformin, and then they, then they treated with sutin, and they were hoping that they would see an attenuation of student-mediated uh, cytotoxicity, because metformin overactivates AMPK, and he did not see any attenuation. You know, therefore, we wanted to move forward and try to test whether in a more relevant human, human model that has a more relevant energy, uh, energy homeostasis mechanism, whether certain uh, 
is actually be mediating the cardiotoxicity through AMPK. So first we just wanted to profile certain mediated cardiotoxicity in the eye cells. So in an ATP depletion assay over a concentration range of 4 to 250 micromolar and a time course from 0 to 48 hours, we wanted to uh, determine a more narrow window to test the cells in, in further experiments. And as early as four hours at 31 micromolar, there was an 80% depletion of ATP. And by 24 hours, there was you know, zero, almost 0%, zero around 1% of the cells were still alive. So I was able to narrow the, the dose response curve that I was going to look at in the, the experiments I'm going to discuss from around 8 micromolar to 31 micromolar. And I looked at a variety of different cytotoxicity endpoints, such as ATP depletion, right down here, glutathione oxidation, lactate dehydrogenase release, which is looking at the integrity of the cell membrane, um, as well as caspase 37 cleavage, looking at apoptosis. And found that the TC50 for ATP depletion in these cells was around 16 micromolar. So certain is inhibiting downstream signaling of AMPK and not the upstream phosphorylation uh, uh, by either LKB1 or uh, CAMKK kinase. So first I just wanted to confirm by Western bot that these cells are actually expressing AMPK and that we can in fact modulate its downstream signaling in this model. So right here is this, the expression of AMPK and as a positive control I also looked in the HEC293 cells. Sutin is only supposed to inhibit the downstream signaling of AMPK. You can see clearly here that it's inhibiting phosphorylation of ACC and is not affecting the phosphorylation of AMPK. So in order to test whether AMPK activation um, can attenuate sutin mediated cardiotoxicity, I pre-treated the cells with uh, potent activators uh, ICAR and metformin for three hours and I just wanted to again confirm by Western blot that I can actually upregulate the phosphorylation of AMPK as well as its downstream target ACC over the time course that I was interested in. So I pre-treated with both one and two millimolar ICAR as well as metformin and then treated a dose response of 0 to 31 micromolar of sutin. And in an ATP depletion assay, I did not see any attenuation of sutin uh, cardio, uh, cytotoxicity. So therefore, I concluded that AMPK may not be a critical kinase mediating sutin cardiotoxicity, but that's not sufficient. So I, I went into the vast kinase library that Roche has, and I pulled out AMPK alpha-1 and 2 small molecule inhibitors that inhibit around 100% and I treated from 4 micromolar to 250 micromolar and I measured not only ATP depletion but lactate dehydrogenase and there was no cytotoxicity in two of the molecules and you know a TC50 of around 250 micromolar. So therefore I concluded that AMPK is not a critical kinase involved in sutin mediated cardiotoxicity. The other kinase that Tom Force hypothesized may mediate certain uh, cytotoxicity is risk. So ribosomal S6 kinase uh, was proposed because it had KD values within 0.14 and, and 0.017 for risk 1-2, which was within the uh, 0 0.1 uh, micromolar effective plasma concentration of, of sutin. And it also had, in a kinase assay, an IC50 value of around 0.36 micromolar, and this was worked on by David, uh, by Hasanoff's group. And it's also a, a target as an anti-cancer agent. It's overexpressed in 50% of breast cancers. So it would be good to know if you inhibit risk, are you going to have any sort of cardiac adverse events in the clinic? So I collaborated with Jack Taunton at UCSF, and I got an irreversible potent inhibitor of risk. And in, a, in an AMBIT profile screen, it's extremely selective to just risk and it doesn't have any off-target effects. So I did a similar time uh, dose response from 4 to 250 micromolar 
and I also measured similar endpoints of ATP depletion and lactate dehydrogenase release, and it had a TC50 value of around 250 micromolars. So risk is not a cytotoxic agent in cardiomyocytes. But I wanted to determine whether it had any effects on the electrophysiology. So I utilized the Excelligence RTCA cardio system. So this is a measurement of impedance. It's a shift in the XYZ plane. And the trace that you see here is the functional contraction of the cells. At the top of the peak, it's fully contracted. So these cells are plated in a monolayer. And they're very dense. And they beat synchronously. And so the, the top of the peak that you're seeing here is when they're fully contracted. And they're lifted off of the cells, off of the plate. And at the bottom of the peak, they're fully relaxed. So what you're looking at here is a number of different wells on the, on the Excelligence uh, system. The top two wells is no treatment, and then vehicle, DMSO. And then at the below here, three wells where I treated at a low concentration of 12.5 micromolar of risk. And within five minutes, I had a significant decrease in amplitude as well as decrease in contractility of the cells. So I thought that was kind of odd, and I wanted to look at it throughout a longer time course. And by 45 hours, I didn't see any rescue of contractility of these cells. But I knew, based on the uh, LDH assay and ATP assay, that these cells are happy and alive. So I, I hypothesized that risk may have an effect on the electrophysiology and contractility of these cells just based on, on this experiment. I wanted to take a look at it further and use microelectrode array, uh, as well as look at similar uh, effects of the electrophysiology using automated patch clamp. We're looking at inhibition of the sodium channel and Herg channels as well. But first I'm going to discuss uh, profiling of student. So again, this is a microelectrode array and the top of the sodium peak and here's the, the calcium peak to the top is about right here and that's the equivalent of QT. And this is a 10 second trace that you're looking at and these, bel these cells are beating synchronously within the microelectrode array. And as around 10 micromolar, we see the initiation of arrhythmic beats. And by 30 micromolar, there's a decrease in the uh, electrophysiology altogether. There's decreases in the sodium peak, the calcium peak, decreases in the beat rate, um, as well as the field potential duration, which is a measurement of uh, QT normalized to beat rate. So again, from the sodium peak to the top of the, the calcium peak. I wanted to see what type of concordance we had between looking at the ISOL model on using the microelectrode array and well-established models that Roche has with Cho cells that overexpress HERG as well as um, Chinese hamster lung cells overexpressing the NAV 1.5. And this essay was done on the Patch Express. So first we attempted to uh, clamp the, the eye cells, but we weren't successful. So this is why I looked at uh, the, this is why I utilized the Cho cells. So the, the IC50 of HERG was around 1.4 micromolar and of NAV 1.5 was around 7 micromolar. So it correlated really well to what we saw in the eye cells in terms of um, the initiation of the ryth rhythmic beats. So inhibition of the sodium channel correlated to the QT prolongation that we were seeing. On to risk, um, with as low as 0.3 micromolar, we saw decreases in the beat rate as well as in the sodium channel. And by 3 micromolar, it said significant, more significant decreases, as well as a, a decrease in the calcium as well. So similarly, I looked at using the Patch Express with the cells that are overexpressing HERG and the sodium channel, that I saw a very potent inhibition of HERG, but a much less significant or not significant at all inhibition of the, so of the sodium channel. Uh, therefore, you know, it, it appears as though that the I cells may be more predictive of the inhibition of the sodium channel than overexpressing NAB 1.5 uh, in the Chinese hamster lung cells. Uh, lastly, I'm going to discuss Aurora. So I compared a number of kinases that are critical to the heart, which is the, the list that you see here, to the AMBIT profile, the AMBIT profile of Sutton. 
and any kinase that was inhibited greater than 85 percent coupled to all of the AMPK inhibitors, so I looked at their uh, AMBIT profiles as well, so anything that was inhibited in the AMPK that was not cardiotoxic and did not have any cytotoxicity or adverse cardiac events, I ruled out. And so that's what you're seeing here highlighted in pink. And of the two, there's the Aurora B and Aurora C. Aurora C isn't expressed in the heart, so my focus was on Aurora B. So Aurora is involved in you know, mitotic spindle formation, centrosome function, as well as cytokinesis, but in the literature it also suggests that Aurora can phosphorylate AKT, which can modulate myocardial contractility as well as hypertrophy. So by Western blot, I just wanted to confirm that this, sig this signaling might actually be occurring. Um, in, in the student AMBIT profile, um, it was showing that Sutin was not directly inhibiting AKT, so we were hoping that it was through the, the downstream signaling. So here you can see that it's in lane one here is the vehicle, then the AMPK inhibitor, and the third lane is Sutin, and the next two lanes are the two Aurora inhibitors, and then a positive control is just the HEC-293 cells. And you can see clearly that there is an inhibition of phospho-AKT, so then I, I moved on. So I selected a number of Aurora inhibitors. So these are pan-Aurora inhibitors. They were inhibiting, to various degrees, all A, B, and C, although C is not relevant. Um, and there was some level of, of cytotoxicity in terms of ATP depletion and LDH release, but we've done a significant amount of, of testing of a variety of um, uh, TKIs, and we found that unless the TC50 values were less than 20 micromolar, anything above that was not significant. So we didn't feel that this level of cytotoxicity was relevant. But I went on to look at Aurora B inhibitors. So this was very selective to Aurora B, and there was less than 85% inhibition of the other two Auroras. And there was no cytotoxicity, even up to 250 micromolar. Therefore, it concluded that Aurora B is not involved in suit mediated cardiotoxicity. So the conclusions that we had were that these human stem cell derived cardiomyocytes, that they're quite novel, novel because you can look at in a single cell the cardiotoxicity or cytotoxicity of the cell, preferably using ATP depletion, but more significantly the electrophysiological effects uh, of you know, a variety of kinase inhibitors. So this would be very relevant in early screening of molecules to try to rank order the compounds before you go in vivo. And that sutin, the sutin profile, we were able to profile sutin adverse cardiac events in this, you know, novel IPS-induced uh, differentiated cardiomyocyte model, and that we did see a dose-dependent cardiotoxicity of sutin and with ATP depletion of a TC50 around, you know, 16 micromolar, and that the electrophysiological and contractile effects we saw as low as one micromolar and that we also saw a relevant reduction in the sodium and calcium and beat rate as, as well as prolongation of the QT <coughs> interval using the microelectrode array. And that although it, it inhibited AMPK signaling, it is not critical in mediating certain cardiotoxicity. And also Aurora is not a relevant uh, mediator as well. So although we saw a potent sodium channel inhibition in the eye cells, we did not see it in the, the uh, uh, Chinese hamstery lung cells. And it was also further confounded, uh, the interpretation of the MEA, because of this potent Herg inhibition. And you know, lastly, student cardiotoxicity, it may not be attributed to the off-target inhibition of a single kinase, but it's more than likely a synergistic effect compounded by the inhibition of many kinases because, you know, it's not very selective. It hit, inhibits over 180 kinases. Uh, and with that, I'd like to thank uh, everyone at Roche, especially uh, the director of the Early Investigative Safety Group, Kyle Colage, as well as uh, Jack Taunton for collaborating with me on using the, his irreversible risk inhibitor.